Saints of God, welcome to Sabbath School Devotion. My name, Edwin Estime. Psalms 133 verse 1 says, Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. Galatians 3 verse 28, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male or female, for all are all one in Christ Jesus. Philippians 2 verse 2, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Colossians 3 verse 14, and above all these put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. What do all these verses have in common? Unity. One of the characteristics of God, which is often repeated in the Bible, especially in the New Testament, is unity. As children of God, we are called to live in unity. So why did God choose to confuse the language of the people at the Tower of Babel in order to disperse them instead of promoting their spirit of unity? This is what we're going to study today. Let's first have a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all you have done. We ask that you give us understanding and wisdom as we go into this lesson today. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Alright, so we're going to continue our devotion with the story of Babel. Let's read Genesis 11 verses 8 through 9. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because there was there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of the earth. Now, why would the God of peace and unity go out of his way to disperse people who are united? I mean, why would God cause such confusion to the point that the people could no longer communicate with each other? leaving them with no choice but to go their separate ways. Isn't unity a, a good thing? Is it a godly thing? Isn't it good for people to come together and live in harmony? I mean, yeah, yes. Under normal circumstances, unity is typically a good thing. But there are times where unity can be a channel that facilitates evil. I mean, history is full of examples where large groups of people got together to commit a, a, a abominable act. Looking back, we may wonder how come no one separated the group to stop it. I mean, that's the kind of unity that creates groupthink and drowns out the voice of wisdom and can literally cause everyone to march to their own destruction. I mean, how do you stop something like this? I mean, if you see a block of people walking together, heading to a cliff, one possibly one possible way to try to stop them from falling off might be to break up the group. I mean, the earth got to the point where evil was picking up momentum again, and the unity that existed among the people was propelling them toward a cliff, and no one could stop them. I mean, just imagine one person trying to convince everyone that the tower was a bad idea. Just imagine how a family would be treated if they said they will pack up and live elsewhere. I mean, it is obvious that by the time the people started to build the tower, they had already turned their backs to God. In fact, Genesis 11 verse 5 refers, refers to the builders of the towers as the sons of men. Considering that everyone on earth at the time were descendants of Noah, the language sons of men here was more of an indication that these people were not living according to the will of God. So when we consider where the people were headed in their unity, the fact that God intervened to disperse them, that in fact was an act of redemption. As strange as it may sound, the confusion of Babel that forced the separation of this monolithic group made it possible for individuals to hear God's voice again. And it was that event that would make it easier for the people, even if in small groups, to follow their hearts when God comes knocking. 
if you read the chapter, you'll notice that it is after the disbursement that verses 10 through 26 and of chapter 11 lists the genealogy, which gives us a better sense of individuals and families. The genealogy goes all the way to Abram's family who were faithful and free to worship. The important takeaway from today's devotion is that as important as unity is, it is even more important as children of God, we continue to listen to God's voice and make sure that we are following his will. It is important for us to continue to study God's word to make sure that our lives align with the principles that he laid out for us in the Bible. And if you are part of a group or even a church and you see that what you are being taught or what's being practiced, it's not consistent of God's word, you need to ask questions. The Bible is the ultimate litmus test for any group. Continue to pray and study and ask God to show you his will and more importantly, the strength to obey his word. I want to thank you for joining me this week as we study about all the nations and Babel. We will meet up again on Sunday. So if you haven't done so already, click the like button, subscribe, and click the bell icon so that you don't miss a single Sabbath school devotion. As always, saints, keep the faith.